Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Conversion Cast. This week, we're talking about companies using the most recent Eclipse to market their business, a metrics update on mobile versus desktop traffic online, the new board member joining the Lead Pages team, and a fun feature roundtable. We're going to talk about why did I buy all that and more this week on Conversion Cast. Hello and welcome to this week's Conversion Cast. We are back this week, just like every week, bringing you the marketing news, Q and A's, roundtables. As always, I'm joined by a guest of marketing geniuses, friends, coworkers. Hi, everyone. Hello. We've, Hi. We've got an extra special guest in the room today, a first timer, Clay Collins. Hey, how's it going? Good, Good. to be here. Great Thanks to, for having me. Great to have you. In the Thanks for house. joining us. Yeah. yeah. Good to be back. It's not your first Conversion Cast. It is your first Conversion Cast in the form that it's taken uh, most the recently. Video. With this yeah. fancy whatnot. Yeah. I feel like I need some kind of bistro sandwich or, I don't know, something. <laughs> well, at least a glass of wine. Where's well, the booze? Uh, these cups are opaque, so oh. no one knows. No one knows. Mm. Okay. Um, we're going to kick things off this week like we kick off every week with a little bit of marketing news. Uh, Liz, I know you're ready to kick things off. What piqued your interest this week? I'm ready. Well, I think what piqued everyone's interest this week was the solar eclipse. Oh, boy. Um, I don't know if any of you tried to watch it here in Minneapolis yesterday. You're not supposed to watch but it. because it Just eyes. Donald Trump watched it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Real up close person. No, but it was, you know, I would... I would rate it like a one out of ten. It was pretty disappointing because oh, no. of the cloud coverage. Hashtag no. anticlimactic. Yeah, it really was. And, <laughs> wah, and I wah. felt like I was surrounded by people with like a ton of camera equipment and they were all like, I'm going to get the best shot. But then it just the clouds and everyone left sad. So, but uh, some people who had a bit more fun with the solar eclipse was, um, I read this article in Adweek that was talking about all of the brands and companies who went out and made a big deal of the solar eclipse yeah. and really, really used it to make uh, different ad campaigns, basically. And it, it sort of reminded me of all the hype around Y2K and all of the companies that leveraged Y2K to sell T-shirts and all the all these different things. Um, so... I mean, there were a bunch of companies, like big companies like Dunkin' Donuts, Jack in the Box, Google, uh, different liquor companies made like special Eclipse drinks that you can make wow. to drink while celebrating wow. the Eclipse happening. We really missed out. Yeah. <laughs> was, um, all of them have like really mm. sounds like hard to come by ingredients, so it's probably okay. <laughs> uh, but what this struck me as, it was really um, the epitome of reactionary marketing. And so these are companies that probably have a pretty strict uh, like marketing strategy in place for the year ahead, right. but they use events like this and they stay nimble enough that they can capitalize on events like this. And in a way, I feel like uh, using events like this, that's an opportunity for your brand to speak to people on a more personal level. For instance, if you were, even if you're a solo entrepreneur and you send out an email about this big event that's happening and that goes to people on your list who are also interested in this event they're going to relate to you on a more personal level than sure. if you were totally disinterested but it's something they're super into sure um so like just being nimble and agile like that and paying attention to what everyone else is paying attention to and then slipping that into your strategy can have a huge payoff totally it almost kind of reminds me i think we've mentioned this once or twice on the show before but the uh the oreo moment in the super bowl yep. when mm -hmm. the lights went out at the super bowl and they got that viral post up in seconds but that was a reaction that had a huge impact on their brand and the, and both the super bowl and the eclipse they're they're news events that we know are going to happen right and so you don't necessarily know what you're going to do on those days but but to you know, make some time to do some marketing on those big, big, uh, culturally important days. You know, you can get a lot of marketing value out of it. Yeah. So there are actually like marketing calendars that have every ridiculous thing on there, right? So like everyone knows about like Mother's Day, Father's Day, right? Mother's Day, roses, Valentine's Day, right? You know, there's all these different reasons for people to buy things, but then there's like Grandparents Day and Aunt's Day. And I was like, listen to this podcast and they're like, this is National Underwear Month. And I'm like, where do you go to like register <laughs> and like do that? Yeah. You know, so then you get some, you know, you can save some money if you buy underwear that month. <laughs> so I, I think people are just making stuff up at this point, um, you know, to, to do a promotion. You know, this is a national... Uh, I don't know, microphone day, so you can save 15% on this microphone. <laughs> 
It's got to be out there, right? Yeah. Well, we do have Entrepreneur National Entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship Week coming up, for which uh, you know the team at Drip does uh, a study every year. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, we're not immune to that either. I yeah. Guess. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, Josh, I'm actually going to kick to yeah. you here. Um, I know you, you've you got a little metrics update for us. I've got just a really brief one here. Um, just an update. They always do this from time to time. What percentage of traffic is now mobile yep. versus desktop? 57% is the, wow. the re- most recent benchmark. This is the flipping, right? It the, flipped. Yeah, we had the mobile moment where, where the majority of traffic was mobile, I think a couple years ago, but now mm-hmm. we're at 57%. And I think the biggest stat, actually the lead in this story, for me personally, was that when you search for something, uh, they're saying that mobile and desktop queries produce different rankings nearly 80% of the time. Wow. Mm-hmm. So that means that what you, you could search for something on your phone and on your desktop computer, mm-hmm. and Google thinks that you want something different with the same query 80% of the time. Very uh, so, and I think a lot of times as marketers, we're like, "Well, what do people mean when they when they search for this thing?" And it's like, "Well, now they probably mean two different things depending on where they're at in their life." So you should probably take that into regard too. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's a uh, responsive, etc. It's yeah. a good thing to keep in mind. Like when I search for lead pages on my mobile phone, I find. Uh, information on how to get to this office, right? I get like Google Maps comes yep. up first, right? Oh, but right. Yep. other people searching for that from desktop will probably get our marketing website. So yep, or a login, yeah. you know, that type of stuff. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Very interesting. Good to keep abreast of at all times. Uh, last but certainly not least, Clay, you have a cool uh, piece of news update sort of related to us and everyone yeah. in the room. So, uh, yeah, some really cool news, and we're going to have a, a, I don't know, what is that thing? So we recorded a session about it this morning uh, with. Uh, with someone, uh, is that conversion cast? Is that what we did, or, or was that yeah, just that was some other thing? Of conversion cast. Okay, yep, yep. all right, all right. So, uh, so uh, David Cancel, uh, who is the CEO of Drift, but also is a five-time uh, marketing technology startup founder, former chief product officer at HubSpot, is now on our board. So we've got a five-person board. It's myself. It's our uh, new CEO, John Tedesco. Um, uh, Seth Levine from the Founder Group, Chris Olson from Drive Capital, and and now David. So um, he's amazing. He brings so much uh, experience and wisdom. Uh, I think he's the best product person and product leader in in marketing tech. Again, like four exits, one IPO, like just all the stuff. Uh, and I've been going after him for a long time. Like I first heard him on Mixergy, asked him to speak here. Uh, then asked him to be an advisor, and then now a board member. So this, there's, I have a carefully constructed funnel, yeah, you know, yeah. that was that was created for this in mind. And uh, you know, when when I kind of knew that potentially there was going to be a time when I'd step down as CEO, I wrote down this list of three things that I wanted to happen before that occurred. You know, one was I wanted to acquire Drip. Uh, the second was I wanted John to be our CEO, and the third was I wanted uh, David on our board. So it's three kind for of a three, cool, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah nice. good. Uh, check all the boxes. Sweet. So um, <laughs> companies in good hands, and uh, we're just really excited to have uh, David on a board. Yeah, awesome. That is fantastic news. That's very exciting. I know everybody in this room has seen him speak at least once, if not multiple times. He was at Converted last year. I listen to his podcast all the time. Seeking wisdom. Yeah, Seeking wisdom. Seeking wisdom, wisdom is Wisdom's great. Really good. We're big yep. fans of that over here. Yep. Anybody plan on going to Hypergrowth, their conference? I don't know. We're sending yet. some people. I think we're yeah. just sending some yeah. people. Are we cool? I hope they're sending people to Converted too, right? Yes. They have to. Yeah, yeah. Totally yeah totally of course. Yeah. David, if you're watching, come on. Send some <laughs> people to Converted. Study abroad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, fantastic. Well, that's going to do it for this week's marketing news. We're going to come back in just a moment here and do a roundtable about why did I buy. Everybody, uh, all of our co hosts today have the most recent recent thing they bought were marketed to online. We're going to talk a little bit about the strategies that got us to that point of purchase. Uh, so stick with us. We'll be right back. This episode of Conversion Cast is brought to you by Converted, the nation's premier marketing conference from the team at Lead Pages and Drip. Join us for two days of networking, fun, and education, where you'll learn proven conversion marketing campaigns from 15 of the best marketing minds in the business. Speakers include Pat Flynn from Smart Passive Income, Joanna Weeb from Copy Hackers. Lee paid his very own Clay Collins, podcaster and filmmaker Kevin Smith, and many more. And starting now, use the offer code SAVE200 at checkout to take a full $200 off any ticket you purchase. We hope you'll join us at Converted, October 17th and 18th in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Get your tickets today at Converted.com. 
We are back with Conversion Cast. Uh, you just saw an ad for Converted, uh, which everyone here I know is super excited about. I'm going. Fast approaching. I'm going. Totally. I'm going. Liz, I'll you're going. Yeah, all right, there we go. Uh, <laughs> not just attend. The marketing world will descend upon Minneapolis <laughs> it will. Absolutely. in October. October. Yep. yep. Uh, not just attendees here, though, but also some speakers. Y'all excited yeah. about your time I'm, on stage? I'm speaking this year at Converted. I'm super stoked. Fantastic. Like, yeah, and uh, especially with how curated uh, the, the agenda is, yeah. like, I feel especially honored to, to have a part in it because I know that the story of conversion yep. is, is an imp- the story is the important part of the conference, right, Clay? Yep. yep. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, <clears throat> the thing about Converted and is we, we tried to kind of go the opposite direction that so many people go with these marketing conferences where there's like these four day multi track conferences and there's five different rooms happening simultaneous, all these stages. You know, we wanted to have a highly curated event. It was uh, two days only where every single speaker is contributing to basically this two-day immersive conversion education experience that walks folks through how to take people who have heard about you, uh, or basically how to get word of mouth, how to convert word of mouth into visitors to your website, how to convert those visitors to your website into leads, how to convert those leads into um, customers and how to convert those customers into lifetime customers. So there's all these segments basically stacked throughout a, a two-day experience that, that sort of train you along this entire conversion journey. And uh, every single time we throw this, the majority of the people who attend say it's the best market conference they've ever been to. They said, you know, generally the thought is like, I didn't know about going to Minneapolis, but then I checked the flights, found out there's actually, you know, huge hub airport, you know, uh, didn't, you know, super easy to get to and uh, really enjoyed myself. So if you're even considering about coming, if you're on the fence, um, come and check us out. We're at converted.com. It's October, what, like eight, I don't know, 17th and 18th. 17th and 18th. Beautiful time of year to be in Minnesota. Oh, Great man. time. Yep, Great absolutely. Time. Before the snow comes. So if you want to say that, you know, you were able to hear it before winter came, you can, it's a perfect time to do it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Fantastic. And I think one other thing that I would just like to say on that that um, that agenda is I've been to so many different conferences, just a lot of different conferences, and people tell me all the time that you know this one was was good because it seemed cohesive. Yeah. Um, I never hear people say, "Oh, it was like all over the place," and I loved it. You know, yeah. I think, and and in that sense, like I don't know, like the the agenda is all strung together. It's really nice. It's like a book on conversion versus like a million different podcasts that yeah. are related or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway. I converted. Agree. It's going to be a great time. We, uh, we hope to see you all there. Um, we're going to cut now to today's uh, feature roundtable section. Uh, very excited to talk about this with the panel today. We did sort of a mini version of this once before. We were talking about retargeting and people had been retargeted and made a purchase because <laughs> they had been retargeted. And I wanted to do a fun exercise with all of you uh, to do why did I buy? Because I think it's really fascinating in the real world where we as marketers are on the receiving end of really good marketing. And I'm curious to know things that you all bought and the reasons that you bought them for in a semi-recent time. So I know I know we've all got something prepared to talk about related to something we bought recently. I know Liz has one. I'm excited to hear yours first if you're ready to All do right, it. I'm ready. All right, fantastic. Uh, so the last thing I bought that I was heavily marketed for was um, MeUndies. MeUndies. And I bought, MeUndies. you know, I went, I bought my first pair, I think because they offered a, a coupon, but then also uh, my fiance bought a pair and she was like, hey, while you're doing that, use this code I got because then I also get a discount. And I was like, go. okay, so... Wow. It was help, helping her out, helping me out with some new undies. Um, and then also, like, I bought the first pair, and I really liked them, but then... Uh, Wait, they, I have to stop they, you. Yeah, I have okay, to stop yeah. you. How did you first hear about them? Um, you, podcasts. Podcast I would hear about them on podcasts. That's, then i check them out, yep. check out their website. That's what yep. got me into them. See them um, yep. all over the <laughs> place. Um and then, so, you know, once I once I bought them, I was on their email list, and yep. they send me their new designs every month. And sure. every month, I'm like, oh, those look good. Yeah. And so, Do you have the underwear subscription where they send you <sighs> a new pair of underwear every month? I don't. Yeah. I'm I'm like, shouldn't you get this them every close day? to getting it though? That's not me on days. I'm like, this close. Is it, <laughs> to is it the U.S. underwear as a service? 
Yes. <laughs> is that is that what that's called? Yeah. You know what it is. You know what it is. That has to be. You know, it's not, it has to you be. better have near 100% monthly active users, right? Like, <laughs> they're not. What's your turn yeah. on that? <laughs> oh, <goodness. laughs> so, so you think that you think the monthly newsletter is enough that you might just fully switch into? I'm just gonna get the pair every month. Yeah, you haven't yeah, done it yet, it but would, you're almost there. I haven't there. done it yet, all but right. I'm like, because they're really nice. They're super soft. Like That's say, all I hear, so. too. Made with micromodal. Yeah. Modal. Which sounds like they could have made that up. I have yeah. no. Yeah, well, sounds pretty just impressive. Soft. <laughs> so. Egyptian cotton. Recently on the show, we were talking about, we had a whole section about word of mouth marketing and talking about that. And I mean, on top of all of the podcast advertising that I have, I know I and everyone here has heard from the undies. All I hear, though, is exactly what you just said is like, they're just as great as everyone thinks they are. Anyone I know who's actually gone for it, they have the two thumbs up. So see, I feel like back. I tried one of those those service. That that's my my story is that I tried like Trunk Love or Stitch Fix or yep. Frump Chump or something. Yeah, I don't sure, know. Like, sure. Is oh. Frump Chump? What no, I made that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. That sounds but like it my should style. be right. That's that's what I like to wear. <laughs> if, Frumpy if, Frump Chump. if this wasn't <laughs> live, I'd be like buying that domain right. But, now. but yeah, so I, I signed up for one of those services, right? And because uh, I don't like to shop, I, I it's not that I don't like to shop. I don't know what to buy, right? Sure. I want somebody else to tell me what looks good sure. and feel comfortable and all that stuff. So they sent me, you know, they sent me this hoodie actually. Yeah. I was like, I like this hoodie. This yeah. is a nice hoodie. It's the, I'd like to wear it and stuff like that. And then uh, my my mom and my wife were were there, and they're like, "How much did you pay for that?" And I told them, and they're like, "You should have gotten that for like thirty bucks." And I'm like, "No." no no, no, it's like high quality. Mm -hmm. And they made me Google the brand and find out that I could get it for like 30 bucks someplace else. And I paid 50 for it. And mm. so there was this great magical marketing experience where I'm like, yay, fashion is now here upon me. Sure. And then my family ruined it. So, <laughs> But they Fun did sponge. provide you an experience you now as a brand and as a company that took away your need to go through all of those extra steps. So if you're willing to pay that premium for it. It just made me feel worse about the whole thing because yeah. now I'm saying like it's it's enough to pay thirty bucks for a hoodie, but then to have somebody charge you twenty bucks because you don't have any style and they're gonna fill that gap for you. Like I don't know. Did you ever That's buy anything else from that, or has this been your only purchase? No, what I did was that was my only purchase, and then there's a store. You know, there's a couple stores that I like the clothes from generally. Mm -hmm. So I just went to their outlet stores and like bought a bunch of yeah. stuff. You know, so. You know, it was effective, but not. I'm not the. I think I, I, I wasn't the right customer. Speaking of why did I buy? Why did you buy? Was it just for the fashion and the? How did you get? Was it yeah. Six Fix or Trunk Club or? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I saw the ads. Yeah, yeah, I saw sure. them in Facebook or yep. or some retargeting sure. setting or whatever. Sure. Yep. What uh, What else did you buy? that we can deconstruct right now. I know oh. that you had something else uh, you had something else you were talking about earlier. Oh, uh, yeah, I bought a Samsung uh, ch wireless charging station Yeah, because my phone, I swear every phone, like nine and a half months to the day after you buy them, they start to go bad or whatever. Yeah. And so the physical connection between my power connector and my phone was no longer working. Sure. Mm. And I couldn't charge my phone. So I went and I had to, you know, get one of those wireless charging stations. Yeah. That was out of necessity, but I'd always seen it and I was like, how do I charge my phone when I can't plug it in? So you hunted down something you had previously seen. Right. Okay. Yep. Cool. A little less interesting for people. No, it's it's all right. I also bought some uh, Parmesan cheese at the grocery store last night. Ooh. Oh. Yep. Because I was hungry. More. Yeah. And uh, I'm Wisconsin. And uh, I needed gas this morning. <laughs> you have a Wisconsinite here, so. <laughs> I'm getting sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me more the about your cheese. It's <laughs> um, great. Clay, anything anything that uh, that you purchased recently? Yeah. The marketing was clean enough to make you uh, pull the trigger on it? Yeah, so um, I, I recently bought this service, it was like yesterday, called uh, x.ai. Okay. And it's a artificial intelligence uh, virtual assistant who schedules meetings for you. Cool. So you can put in all kinds of different parameters around like, you know, when you like to meet, it syncs up with your calendar, it gets to know your preferences. And, uh, you know, at first I was suspicious, but then I heard an entire interview with a founder on a podcast, uh, This Week in Startups, and I was really impressed. And I mm -hmm. thought it was just like a really <clears throat> cool application of artificial intelligence. And it, it doesn't work as well as a human scheduler, but mm -hmm. for like 90% of meetings, it does a pretty damn good job. Wow. And um, yeah, so uh, so I, I recently purchased that. And so that was podcast related. So we've got a, a couple nice. podcast wins here. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't advertising, but it was, uh, you know, good old fashioned content marketing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we talk a lot about guest blogging or things like that, yep. guest hosting on a podcast and keep getting your brand out in that way is yep. also yep. very, very doable. Um, 
That's fantastic. I, I will only break mine down quickly because uh, we are running out of time here. But um, I bought a movement watch finally, which speaking of podcast advertising, if if you listen We're to three podcasts, out of four on podcast, <laughs> we are. Yeah, if that says anything to uh, to the world out there. Um, but that's where it started. I checked out their website because they had a coupon code, uh, signed up for the email list, never used that coupon code, got retargeted, got retargeted again. Finally got a new ad that they were having a an anniversary sale, and that was uh, enough to finally tip me over the edge. So you were in their room. like last ditch kind of cookie. I must pool, have, right? I must have been because it yep. had been a while <laughs> since I originally checked them out. I was yep. like, eh, like I don't really want to spend on. So do you like it? Do you like I, the, do you like the watch? I love it. Yeah. I love it. It's like comfortable. I feel like it looks good. It was affordable. It's I'm totally in nice their target watch. market for who <laughs> I'm sure they market to. Um, but yeah, I'm, coupon code Ryan. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I, I wish I wish I, I had the. Uh, Don't you have to put an ability? affiliate disclaimer in here somewhere? Yeah, <laughs> we are not affiliates for any of the things mentioned uh, earlier. So, today. so I have their glasses, and I really I, I like the sunglasses. Okay, I cool. Think, I think they're pretty good. I've heard good things about those so far, but I'm a prescription guy, so uh, I got to go another route, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, that'll do it for Why Did I Buy and this week's roundtable. We're going to come back in just a moment here with our feature Q&A section, some questions that have come in off of social media, and uh, we'll also address any live things that have come in as well. We'll be right back on Conversion Cast. Would you like to be featured on Conversion Cast? Leave us a short voicemail at 612-568-8732 with your name, the name of your business, and your very best marketing tip. You could be featured on an upcoming episode of Conversion Cast just like this. So give us a call and share your marketing expertise with us. We can't wait to hear from you. Welcome back. This is Conversion Cast. We move now to our social Q&A section where we answer questions that have come in on the lead pages and drip social media accounts. Uh, we're going to start first off with a question from Bryant Wong, who wants to know from the marketing experts at this table, what are successful formulas for writing copy? What have you found to be most effective? Uh, I know everyone here has a thought or two on that. Um, Liz, as, as one of the writers in our building, I'm making you go first. What sure, do you got? sure. So, uh, you know, that's kind of a broad question. Uh, what What are successful formulas for writing copy? Like, Indeed. first of all, it really depends what type of copy you're writing. Yep. Whether it's whether you're just looking for information about writing, you know, headlines or long form body copy or you know, copy on the back of a package. Like, it really depends. But I think what you can say for almost all copy that you're writing, I'm assuming for marketing, is uh, know your audience, know where they are, like uh, how, how informed are they about your product or service that you're trying to get off the ground. Sure. Um, and then really focus on the benefits of what you're offering instead of writing about the features. Uh, something that came to mind when I think about this is uh, my, my fiance buy, bought a Prius. Um, and I don't think she knows a smidge about the the features of a Prius other than the it's a hybrid vehicle. Yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> like like she got in the car and she's like, this is great. I don't know anything about it, but let's go. Like yeah. but she knows she knows the benefit of it and that right. it's helping the environment. Right. And so she was totally driven by that. And I think you can do that same thing in your copy. Um however you should be aware of when not to focus on just the maybe the emotional benefits of what you're offering um if you are writing to a really niche market uh for instance say you are writing to a bunch of audiophiles and they really know everything there is to know about a specific microphone or something like that like those are people who are going to want to know the specific nitty-gritty features of what you're selling right so that makes sense just be just be aware of who you're writing to what stage of information seeking they're at, um, and then go from there. Cool. Yeah. That's well said. So I've, I've got one. So yeah. I'm on the, I like ripping off headline formulas from like Cosmo and stuff. So like sure. any magazine that makes a good percentage of its sales from people who just like glance at headlines when they're checking out at the grocery store. Yep. Right? Like they live and die by these right. headlines. Totally. So I'm on Cosmo right now. It's my favorite magazine. (laughs) Uh, And the the first headline is Jessica Alba and dominating multiple industries. So you can take that formula and you could say famous person on subject topic, right? So James Dean on uh, body language, you know, Uh, or 
uh, James Ian on uh, dominating, you know, body language and poses or like, you know, or like whatever you're doing. Ryan Copperwood on dominating multiple content marketing initiatives. Or <laughs> yeah. Or, like you know. I'd read that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Clark Kent on uh, dominating uh, your spandex out outfit wardrobe. I don't know. Like whatever you want to do, you can you can personalize this to your industry. So like, let's say you're in, in like the health food industry. You could say like. I don't know what's a famous person. Donald Trump on dominating. Uh, you know what? Let's not talk about foreign policy. Okay. Moving so on. two, uh, no, the next one up here is the most outrageous outfits the VMAs have ever seen. So you could do like the most outrageous blank that the blank industry has ever seen, right? Like these mm -hmm. are just kind of templates that you can adapt in different ways. So Cosmo is filled with these. You know, cut and paste, build your own swipe file, and yeah. uh, rinse, wash, repeat. That's cool. That's great. I dig that. I think I've got uh, two two things that I think uh, have always helped me. The first thing is whenever you have a button uh, and you want to put copy in that button, um, make sure that you're that you can always complete the sentence "I want to" yeah. and put yourself in the uh, mind of the consumer. So um, submit now. Probably the worst copy text ever, ever, because nobody says "I want to submit now," but people will say "I want to." Re well, <laughs> different show. <laughs> I want to receive, you know, free tips for, you know, my home improvement project or yeah. whatever. Like that's a much stronger call to action. Right, yeah. um, and so try and finish that sentence. I want to in your buttons. And um, yeah. And so, I mean, there's like a ton of data out there that shows that you, if for your button copy, you should never say your you should always say my. Right. So like, I want to download my free report. Yep. Like that works. If yep. you say download your free report, Yep. That that gets a much lower conversion rate because people are sort of having this comp this dialogue in their own head and they're like, you know, download your report. Yeah, basically you, know, you want to write from the first person <laughs> right. perspective yep. Yep. of the person reading it. Yeah, and it's like every time you ask a consumer or a user to take action, put it in the first person. Every time you're taught they're reading something, put it in the second person. So your headline should be you will get this benefit, yep. you will get these things, and then when it's the user's turn to click, it's I'm going to do this. Yes. That's what you're saying. Yeah, yep. cool. Uh, I know we're running along. One other one that I wanted to mention though sure. is um, the bucket brigades style of writing blog posts. Yeah. And so it used to be that they talked inverted pyramids, start with the most important thing and then the next most important thing and then the third and then finally at the very end that's how newspapers are written and so on and so forth right. bucket brigades though they're talking about every sentence is another paragraph and then just and then you might have a two sentence uh uh, or two word sentence that's also just a paragraph, right? Yep. So it's this idea of just slowly having a conversation with people versus, you know, highly structured, top to bottom, outlined type uh, of content. Uh, totally. That's the other major shift that I'm seeing. Sweet. Those are all very good tips. I love that. Uh, we're going to do one more question off our social Q&A here. Uh, Vera Devera Dalrymple, I think is the name. I'm sorry if I botched that, Vera. I did my darndest. Um, darndest. Vera wants to know, how will AI and improvements in marketing automation impact the way we reach our customers over the next five years? Oh my gosh. And I know there's probably some takes. Yeah. I, so I, 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 have, I have a lot of thoughts on this. So don't expect AI to just kind of revolutionize everything you know, out of the blue, I, I see this progression in marketing technology. So the sort of the first generation marketing technologies were essentially blank slates, right? So you could write, you know, you'd write a landing page from scratch, you'd write emails from scratch, you'd write marketing copy from scratch. Um, kind of the, the next generation was template driven, right? So you would have kind of done for you templates that you could modify. So your brain kind of got to switch from, you know, coming up with content from scratch or coming up with marketing collateral to scratch to uh, modifying existing marketing collateral. And it's a lot easier for the brain to modify something than it is to stare at a blank page and try and, and fill that in. Totally. The, the next step that we're going to see is AI assisted template selection. So based on what a, a system knows about you, your traffic, the data, um, and, 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 you know, network effects around information that's being collected across entire marketing platform, you know, that system can select for you or suggest, recommend templates based on what it knows for you. And then sort of the, the step beyond that will be, you know, some of that will start to be filled in, but it's mm -hmm. going to be gradual. It's going to come up, you know, one, one piece at a time and it's not going to be overnight. So now I, right now we're seeing this shift from, 
uh, template driven to template driven AI assisted. And uh, once we land there, I think we're going to have more visibility on the next step. Hmm. Um, fantastic. I'm going to thank all of you for your brains. Clay, thanks for joining us for the first time. Will you Happy come to be back? Here. Yeah, yeah, dude, just whenever. Just awesome. say the word. I, awesome. got, I got tons of free time. Okay, now. great. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to have you back then uh, to Josh and Liz. Thank you both as well, thanks, as man. always, for being here. Uh, this has been Conversion Cast. It's been great being with you wherever you are right now, whether you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook, if you're listening on your favorite podcast app. Go ahead and give us a subscribe, a review, a comment, whatever that is. Uh, this show is made by marketers for marketers, and we're very excited to make this show the best thing we can for marketers just like you. So let us know how we can do that. Until next week, we will see you next time on Conversion Cast. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>